So we've said that one of our equations of motion for constant acceleration is of the form that the position as a function of time is equal to some initial position plus the initial velocity times time plus one half the acceleration time squared. But how do we know that that really is true for a constant acceleration problem? We can use calculus, particularly derivatives, to help us prove that for this equation we do indeed have a constant acceleration. So one of the first things we want to look at is how do I know that this little xi out front really is supposed to be my initial position? Now if I define my final position as the position at some time t and my initial position as the position at a time of zero seconds, then when I plug in zero into this equation, I still have my first term. My second term is time zero, so that's going to go away. My third term is also time zero squared, so that's going to go away. So what's left is indeed that first term xi. So that proper interpretation is this, this xi is the position at a time equal zero. If I put in a time of t, that would give me my final position. Now, if I look at the derivative of that quantity, that's going to give me the velocity, because the velocity is the derivative of the position with respect to time. So I have to take the derivative of this equation. Now, if you're having troubles with derivatives, watch the little video that gives you some tips on taking derivatives of polynomials. First term's a constant, so that's going to go away. We then have a first order of time, and so that gives us just the value out front, vi. We've got a second order term for time. Square is going to come down, multiply by the 1 half, canceling that factor out, leaving us with a, and the t squared becomes a t. And again, we've said that this first little vi here stands for the initial velocity, because that initial velocity is supposed to be the velocity at a time of zero. Again, plug that in, and we find that indeed, whatever was here to start with is our velocity at a time of zero. Now if we take it further, do the second derivative of the position, or the derivative with respect to time of the velocity equation, it's the second derivative of the position because I did the derivative once to get the velocity, the derivative a second time to get the acceleration. VI is a constant, so I'm left with just this term, which is first order in time, so that becomes just A. Notice, no time dependence. If there's no time dependence, that means we've got a constant acceleration. No matter what value for time I've got, I've always got the same value for acceleration. So this is how we can prove that this equation that we've assumed really does work for a situation where we've got constant acceleration. Furthermore, we have a second one of our equations that end up being used when we look at our velocity. Now, as a caution, sometimes these equations get rearranged a little bit when we use them. For example, this first one can be written as the final velocity or the final position minus the initial position, if I just move that to the other side of the equation. And that's sometimes called delta x. And this is the form that shows up on my equation sheets. But remember, it came from that formula up there. And this one is then written as the final velocity is some initial velocity plus acceleration in time. And in this case, we're just taking our velocity as a function of time and saying, particularly at a time of t, we're going to call that the final velocity. So here's how we get two of our equations for constant acceleration and prove that they do fit for constant acceleration using calculus and derivatives.